Oh good, hello, welcome back to Anya's Skin. Now, general rule of thumb. If a tool is behaving a little bit weird or you want to explore it a bit more deeply, just check tool properties. There's probably going to be some switch or dial in there that you can flip and interesting things will start to happen. When you start to get a bit more confident with them, you can even create these little combos and almost build some interesting custom tools this way. For example, this one's quite neat. You know how the paint bucket is also like a lasso. If you group select everything, it'll paint all of it. If we switch that from the regular paint bucket to paint unpainted, it'll of course ignore previously painted areas, only filling in things that haven't yet. But if we combine that with this switch applied to multiple frames, this becomes a fourth dimensional selector. As I grab regions of the world, it'll, it'll, it'll do everything. However, we're kind of working a little bit blind. So if you hold on the drop down, notice that this is indeed a drop down, you can change it to apply to onion skin range, right? So now the onion skin itself becomes interactable. Everything that you can see can be bucketed. That's all well and good on very clear examples like this. But some animations like this head turn can be a little bit busy. There's a lot of overlapping action, right? But consider with the onion skin on, there may be some area of common interest, like right here. If I paint bucket right in that spot, bam, it's done all of the face and ignored the eyes. With the eyes being the only thing left to go, I can do a great big swash of the whole thing. There we go. Paint bucketing done. I hope that saves you some time. Consider in your practice just rolling over some of these tool properties. They have quite self-explanatory little tips. 